What's up everyone, it's your boy Nornrad89 here bringing you another video and you know it's coming to the end of the year. 2022 is wrapping up and we're about to roll into 2023 and I thought it'd be fun to do some ranking videos. So today we're going to do my top 10 worst films of 2022. I thought it'd be fun to do the worst first, you know what I mean? You get, get a little soft stuff, get a little silly, you know what I mean? And talk some shit, you know what I mean? It's not to discredit any of these movies. Like I know it takes a lot of time and a lot of effort to write, to create and put your, you know, talents into a film. But for me, these are the 10 that I digested this year that I just didn't like. I would say probably six through 10 are more just very bland, like meh films but then five to one are the ones that were very egregious that I was like fuck this movie so today we're gonna get into this ranking and like I said this is just my list my personal opinion that means I would love to hear from all of you in the comments section share your list of your top 10 worst films or just a couple you know or a few whatever you got that were the ones that you disliked the most this year so let's get into this video roll it So coming in at number 10, opening us up is going to be Rob Zombie's The Munsters. And The Munsters, this is one that I actually was looking forward to. The reason it's on this list mainly is because I was really looking forward to this. The trailer actually had me sold that this was going to be a very solid watch. And even though I didn't like the way the color was looking and I wanted it to be black and white, I still was trusting Rob Zombie because I love a lot of his films. But the monsters is just one that ugh, I couldn't I couldn't do it. Like I was watching it and I was just like, damn, this is really bad. I watched it twice, and I must confess it's a lot better when you watch it with family members or somebody else who's somebody who enjoys the monsters and loves it. It's a lot more fun. But for me, it just didn't do it. And it's like I said, sitting here at this top number uh, top ten, number ten spot mainly, like I said, because I did have some high hopes for this film and trusted Rob Zombie, but just what he delivered on screen, I wasn't happy with. Coming in at number nine is going to be a Shutter original called The Cellar, starring Alicia Cuthbert. And this is another example of a just very bland, kind of mediocre, meh type film. And for me, The Cellar, what happened with this one is I really was excited because Alicia Cuthbert is an actress I'm a huge fan of, and she does some good stuff in horror. She really does. And like, I like the House of the Wax remake. That's a really good film. She even did another one. I can't remember the name of it, but she did other horror movies and stuff like that. But The Cellar, not a good one. This is one where her daughter ends up missing vanishing in their cellar and then you end up finding out there has to do with math and alchemy and all this stuff and kind of an ancient entity that's she has to fight to wage war to win the souls back of her daughter and yeah the father character just fucking disappears like Alicia Cuthbert is the only thing carrying this movie like the only reason you're gonna fucking watch this movie is because of her and she's clearly the best actor in this fucking movie and yeah the seller is just like I said the very bland meh especially with the ending I was just like wow I put myself through an hour and 30 minutes of this and I'm like, I gained nothing. Coming in at number eight, we have Lightyear. Yes, Disney is in the mode of cash grabbing and they are putting out a lot of properties and they're just trying to cash grab. And I'm sorry to say that a lot of the Disney shit that they're putting out is total crap and Lightyear is one of those movies. This is one of those films that I watched with my kids. I watched it and it's like such a gorgeous looking film. The graphics look spectacular and the animation is off the charts, but it's so fucking boring. It's just so boring and it's a film that like literally two hours after I watched it, I forgot most of it. That That's how, like, that's this kind of movie. I watched it and I was like, literally two hours later, I was like, what? I, I fucking forgot what I watched because it just didn't click. It didn't leave any lasting impression. And that's what Lightyear is. It's just a bland, really great looking film that's not going to leave any impressions on you. And it's like I said, just a very weak attempt at cash grabbing on a property that is very popular in the Disney, you know, genre. Next up, we have number seven. That's going to be Firestarter. And this is one that I was actually kind of excited for when I saw the trailers. This is another one kind of similar to the monsters. When I saw the trailer, it sold me on the film. 
I checked this out on Peacock, and it's another one that is very bland, very mediocre, and I don't like the changes that they added to this film. It's from the original one that was done with Drew Barrymore, which isn't a film that I return to very often, like it's not one of my favorite Stephen King stories or anything like that, but that 80s one at least still has some 80s nostalgia to it. It has a young Drew Barrymore in it that I like better than the actress in this film, and I, like I said, the stuff they decided to change and do in this movie to add new elements didn't make it any better, and the ending is just kind of like really like we spent all this time in this movie to get a CGI fest bullshit ending that takes place in a small hallway corridor type underground facility that just it's not pleasing to the eye it doesn't look cool it's just you know what I mean it's like really this is what you decided to do with your finale like come on now Coming in at number six, we have another animated film, and this one's going to be Turning Red. And this one baffles me because it has a freaking 95% on Rotten Tomatoes, and I really don't know how that's possible because this film, watching it, I, I understand the themes and the story they're trying to tell and what they were like kind of doing metaphorically representation-wise, but... I just couldn't stand our main character in this film. She's so egregious. She's one of my least favorite main characters that I've seen in a film all year. That's why Turning Red is up here. And even the fact that we have her like, oh, she's going through her adolescent problems and doesn't want to, you know, she wants to segue away from her mom and kind of be her own thing and have her friends and stuff. But when she gets very emotional, she turns into a giant red panda. And it has to do with her bloodline and her mom has a secret about it because her mom chose to like kind of give up that life. But she it's something that happens to women in their bloodline. And it's just uh, it's one of those movies that it's very fucking predictable. It has all the usual suspects of all the stuff that we have in animation films and that typical kind of Pixar type stuff. And it's kind of like some of these animation films, the way we're going is it's just becoming very cookie cutter we've seen that before and turning red is a perfect example of that film is one that i didn't get anything new out of this Eight. her character she's just so annoying there's nothing that pulls me in that i'm like oh okay i want her to succeed or i need you know what i mean her friend characters were way more interesting and even her mom character was way more interesting of a character so that's why yeah turning red is sitting here at this number six spot. But here we are at the top five now. And like I said, from six to 10, those were kind of the most meh kind of eh films. Like I said, I didn't hate them, hate them, but they're just like kind of bland bullshit movies that I'm not gonna ever wanna return to. These top five are films that I actually were like either really freaking bored with, which is a crime for me when I go see a movie. If you bore me to death and I kind of wanna fall asleep or turn the movie off, that's not a good sign or you have characters in it that really freaking suck. Like, you know what I mean? These, that's what's gonna get you in this kind of spot, in this area in the top five. So bringing us into the top five is gonna be Shark Side of the Moon, which is a very low budget kind of bullshit horror film about Russians, the USR Russians who send mutant sharks to space and then a in like kind of I think it's like 10 or 15 years later a U.S. group of astronauts go to the moon and they come across these mutant sharks in space and it doesn't look freaking good at all it looks awful and the fact that why this movie's at number five is because they take themselves way too serious this is a film that takes the story to a serious extent where it's like okay we're like you know uh -uh, no, no. This is once you describe a film and you have sharks going to a moon, mutant killer sharks that were sent there by the Russians, and then we go to the dark side of the moon, the Americans, and we get slaughtered by them. That's that's fucking camp. That's a straight up campy style type horror film, and you gotta lean into that. And if you don't lean into that, it's not gonna work. And like I said, they take themselves way too freaking serious with this movie. So. Yes, Shark Side of the Moon is one of those films that don't don't waste your time. This movie is going to either piss you off, it's going to bore you to death, or like I said, you're just going to be very agitated that you committed to like an hour and 27 minutes to this crap. Coming in at number four, we have a holiday horror film, and that's The Killing Tree. I did review this on my channel, so this is one you can go back and check out my review for it. 
And yeah, I gave it a 4 out of 10. This is kind of just some mediocre, like, you know, low-budget indie bullshit. But The Killing Tree, what sucks about this film is that there's little things that the creators didn't take care of. That it's just, it, it holds this film back. It's a cool idea, and that's what I like about it, is it's the idea and the premise of the story. And it being a Christmas horror film, you have a possessed killing tree that with a soul of a man that's being brought back that's evil. It has like elements in it that could be badass, but the kills are weak as shit. The CGI sucks, and like I said, it has some really awful acting and all that stuff just kind of bogs this movie down. And that's why, yeah, like I said, The Killing Tree, it's one of those films that I saw potential for, and I was like, damn, this could be a very fun kind of campy slasher vibe and with some good holiday horror themes and it would have worked fine, but no, the execution on it is very poor. So yes, The Killing Tree sits here comfortable at this number four spot. Now, coming in at this number three spot is going to be Jurassic World Dominion. And this is one that totally surprised me on it being this bad. This is one of those films that when I went in, I had zero, zero expectations. Like me, for me as a fan of Jurassic Park and a fan of Lost World... That's literally it. A fan of Jurassic Park and The Lost World. I had no hopes for this film. I was like, went into it. I was like, you know, Jurassic Park to me, this franchise is dead. I really don't care. But it still pissed me off. And that's because they brought back Sam Neill. They brought back Jeff Goldblum. They brought back Laura Dern. And they even brought back one of the scientists from the first film. And it's just... This movie is awful, man. And what it has to do with part of it being why it's so bad is it has to pick up where that last film left off, Fallen Kingdom. And that movie was awful. And it has to juggle a storyline that's in that film. And it kind of, kind of works in this movie. But the problem is that the dinosaurs get sidelined. All the amazing shit that you want to see with dinosaurs being loose in the world now. Like I said, it's World Dominion. It's their world now. It's like, forget humans. No, the dinosaurs are, should be ruling and running stuff. This film has so many ideas that are clashing together. And like I said, bringing back the original OG cast to do a storyline that has mostly to deal with crops and locusts. Like, what the f like, for real, what the F are you doing? Like, this film is trash. This is one of those movies that I get pissed off about because I'm like, people, even because it's an intellectual property and people love it, that they just, a company just throws billions and billions of dollars at this. And there's no quality control when it comes to the actual movie in terms of the content they're going to put out. And then when you go see the movie, it ends up being shit like this. That's why Jurassic World Dominion is sitting here on the top 10 worst. Because like I said, this is one that for me, it just, it pissed me off because I had no investment in this franchise in the first place anymore. And it still pissed me off. So that's why it's sitting here on this list. Coming in at number two, the runner up to the top dog is going to be a Marvel film and it's going to be Thor Love and Thunder and this was another one kind of like Jurassic World Dominion as I was watching it it just kept getting worse and worse and worse and it was so bad and this one kind of sucks because because Thor Ragnarok was good and Takai Watiti had me on board with oh okay he's committing to this Thor character and I like what he did with Ragnarok it had an awesome style and an awesome flair to it and for the first time ever I'm on board with Thor as a solo character away from the Avengers Thor Love and Thunder didn't do shit to help that it didn't do anything to help that cause because Takai Watiti tanked it all the way down and like I said Thor Love and Thunder is one of those films that it's just it's laughably bad as it's going on, the cringy dialogue, the characters, the arcs that are happening, the fact that we have Natalie Portman in this film coming back and she has like the most interesting arc in this film and she's just a sideline character. We have Christian Bale in here who's one of the best actors playing your villain Gore the God Butcher and you, you put him in a film that you just decide to phone it in. And that's what pisses me off is Thor Love and Thunder. I feel like it's a film they just decide they just phoned it in. And like I'm kind of talking crap about it right now. Like I said, I said in the beginning, 
I know how much it takes to put in movies. I know what actors have to go through and I know how directors and production companies, how everything kind of works and it has to come together. And Thor Love and Thunder is one of those films that like said, where's the quality control? Where is the effing quality control when it comes to your movies, Marvel? Because what Phase 4 did was just completely, for me, it made me lose hope and what the future is for Marvel because of the stuff they put out. And Thor Love and Thunder is like the champion kind of holding that crown as to like, look, we we, we have no freaking idea what the hell is going on. We don't, we don't know. We don't know what we want to do. We're kind of losing faith like now. And yeah, this is what we're going to put out. Just billions of dollars that we put towards a film and it's total crap. But now we're here at the number one spot, the top dog. And of course, like I said, there has to be a number one. And out of all the films that I saw this year, this was the one that pissed me off the most. I actually talked about it for days. You could ask my wife, you could ask my like my daughter, my mom, everybody, like anybody that knows me or lives near me or I spoke to, even people on Twitter, you can ask them. This is the movie all year that freaking pissed me off. And <laughs> like I'm trying hard not to cuss right now, is Speak No Evil. Okay, let's kind of talk about this film and get into it, because like I said, this is the most egregious film. I didn't even really want to do a review on this film, just because I hated it so much. Like, this is a movie that I've, one of those films, as I was watching to describe it, I wanted all the characters in this film. We have child characters in here, too, so like, like, let's just get that across right away. I wanted all of these characters to die horrible fucking deaths. And that's, that's bad. Like, you know, like, say, oh, does that make me a bad person? I don't know. But the way the characters were written in this film, the way it was executed and what takes place in this movie, like I said, I wanted every character to die a horrible death. So Speak No Evil is a movie about a Danish family who meets a Dutch couple. It's two couples. They meet each other. They kind of party, hang out at like a bar, you know, chilling. And then they kind of exchange information. And then later on in the film, the Danish couple gets a note from the Dutch couple. Oh, come vacation. Hang out at our place at our home over here. Come chill with us. Spend, you know, a little time for the weekend. Weird stuff starts to go down when they spend time with these people. But it's like red signals. Flags that it's like, you know, get get the get the hell out of here. Like, that. that's the kind of signals you're getting. Oh, and this main family the danish family that we're supposed to feel sorry for is written so poorly and they acted just it's so stupid and the way the characters are done and portrayed on screen i freaking hated this film and it sucks because this film there's actually a horrible ending like they die these people die like i don't even care if i spoil this film for you like this couple the the couple that gets into this that stays and decides to stay hanging out with this dutch family after some weird shit is going down they freaking die okay and there you get their daughter taken away like i really don't care if i spoil this film for you because it's that bad their daughter gets taken away and it's all because we have stupid characters in this film that are written so bad that even when the villain couple that's taking your daughter from you, like what the, and they all they have on them is a knife. They don't have no gun. They don't have other weapons. One of them actually leaves you in the car with you and your wife and it's just the girl in the back and you can't do nothing. You can't fight them. What the? I'm already getting pissed off. Like my, my blood pressure is boiling. I can feel my blood pressure raising because that's, how this film pissed me off is because it has some of the most awful, most stupidly written egregious characters that I've ever seen. And egregious seems to be my favorite word for this video, so we're going to stick with it. Just that I've ever seen in a movie. And that's why Speak No Evil takes the crown and has the title for Worst Film of 2022. This film pissed me off, like I said, for days after I was talking about this film of how I... Oh, it agitated to me. Like, and I mean, who knows? I might one day return to this film just to see if I still have that visceral reaction of anger towards this film. But as of right now, I'm not going to. But, like I said, we just went through my top 10 worst films of 2022. But that means 
It's just my list. My personal opinion of the films, like I said, that pissed me off that I just kind of wanted to crap on because they were either meh, bland, kind of mediocre crap with millions of dollars behind their project, or it was just kind of low budget crap. Or, you know, we had films on here that were tied to really big franchises that they just phoned it in. So we had all kinds of stuff on this top 10. But I still would love to hear from all of you in the comment section. Share your list of your worst films from this year so we can all have some fun in the comments and everything. But most importantly, be sure to like and subscribe so you get more videos like this. And I can keep pumping out more content for you. And also, have a safe and happy day, everyone. Peace out.